Welcome to my channel. My name is Lizard Mods. Today I'll be talking about talking NPC vendors. It was first conceptualized as an NPC card vendor. I contacted Razor about what more this plugin could possibly do. After collaborating with Tofu Ninja and myself, we got to work adding new features to the plugin. We enlisted the help of Son of a Biscuit for the overall UI design of the plugin. White Thunder was a consultant so that the NPCs could spawn at the same monument even after map changes. With all of that said, I'm going to help you guys be able to configure this to fit your server environment. Let's get right into the video. The first thing that we're going to need to do is install the plugin. So go inside of your Oxide folder into your plugin folder. Go ahead and drag Talking NPCs into the plugins folder. From here, the plugin will load up. And then we can begin configuring the plugin within the game. First, we're going to have to give ourselves permissions for the plugin. You'd want to give this to the admin group. Go into Talking NPCs and then Grant. By typing in chat, talking underscore NPC will bring up some commands for us to work with. These commands allow us to add or remove a particular NPC from a location. Furthermore, we can give it a conversation file or append it to a monument. All changes we make for talking NPCs will be done within the data file. From there, navigate to talking NPCs. We are looking for the conversation files. These are individual profiles for each talking NPC. For this example, we will be referencing the default conversation file. We can enter the command talking underscore NPC add Give the NPC a name, we'll call him Bob, the default conversation file, and we'll set it to true, so he'll always spawn here at this monument. Once we've successfully done that, we have a new NPC. Say hello to Bob. If we look inside the default conversation file, the first thing we can see is his welcome message. Let's take a look at the second option within the config. Message display time seconds. Only use if there is no response. Here we have the response. And if we go ahead and remove the responses altogether and set a delay for five seconds, then reload the plugin, we will be able to see the outcome of this message. Now, when we click on Bob, we have no options to click on any buttons. And after five seconds, this message will go away. You can now think about making more meaningful changes. Let's make a basic shop. Here I have added the responses back. Let's change the first response to, what do you have for sale? When the player clicks on the button, it will take them to the next window. In this instance, that will be page one. So let's change that as well. We can change this to say, I have a bow for 75 scrap. And in the response message, I will buy the bow for 75 scrap. Next, we need to set the price for the button. By default, all buttons item IDs are set to scrap. So the only thing we need to change in this example is the price. This command allows you to give your players custom items. The syntax for the give command is give item, item ID, amount, skin ID, and item name. If we look up rust item ID on Google, we can find a listing in Corrosion Hour to find our bow for the item ID number. Here we have the Hunter's Bow, and here's the item ID. Here I can snag the skin ID for this bow. Next, we can go ahead and add the command for this. This is a server command. Inventory.give2 player ID and all you have to add is short name and the amount. In this case, we'll give the player arrows. Let's use that command to give players arrows when we give them the bow. Now we're set to give them a bow and arrows. The next set of commands, user ID, player name can be used to bridge the gap for other plugins. We can use player name command to personalize our message to the player. Let's make that change now. We can scroll up to page zero. Welcome to my shop, Wanderer. Instead of Wanderer, we can go ahead and replace it with the command. We also need to think about what happens if the player has insufficient funds. 
Right now it is null, but we can go ahead and change that to go to page two. And if we look at page two, it says, that's nice to hear. Let's go ahead and change that to something more appropriate for someone who doesn't have enough money. Perhaps something like, come back with scrap, you bum. If they are successful, I think message five, just as quick and dirty, will suffice for what we are doing. So next message, page five. Also, page one doesn't need all these buttons. So we'll just go ahead and grab this one that also takes them to page five. And we will get rid of the last two buttons with just one. Let's go ahead and save and then reload the plugin to see our changes. Welcome to my shop, Lizard Mods. How can I help you? What do you have for sale? I have a bow for sale for 75 scrap. I will buy the bow for 75 scrap. There it is. We have our bow. We got our arrows. Success. The next command we should look at is open vending. This allows your NPC to display a vending machine user interface. This requires custom vending setup from Umod. We'll do a quick installation of custom vending setup. Let's go ahead and scroll down and add an open vending command. On the first page here, I have a bow for sale for 75 scrap. We could say, do you have anything else for sale? Of course, we'll have to put them to another page. Let's go ahead and send them to page three. And on page three, we could say, take a look. And here we could say, okay. Go ahead and null this out. We can now add our command, open vending, give the vending machine a name, Bob1. And we could even add another vending machine if we wanted. Should we put a comma? and give this another name, Bob2. Let's see more. So far, we have been editing the default conversation file, but now we have to edit the talker spawner file. Let's jump into that to make sure that we can get our vending machines to spawn with Bob. Navigate to data, then talking NPCs, and then open up the talker spawner file. Inside of the talker spawner file, we could see the name Bob. This is the profile name for this NPC. Here we can see the conversation file that this NPC is using. You can come up with multiple different kinds of conversation files or multiple NPCs could use the same conversation file. This is the position and rotation anchored to the monument where it's located. So when you do map changes, it'll always spawn at the same location. Here we got Bob's name. This is only useful for changing uppercase to lowercase. So when you interact with the NPC, you'll see the name displayed. Here we have vending machine configuration files. We're gonna have to go ahead and create a couple of profiles for our NPC. The ones we gave it was Bob one and Bob two. Now, if we save this and reload the plugin, we will have vending machines to interact with. When we interact with Bob. Do you have anything for sale? Do you have anything else for sale? Okay, let's see. And here we are. This is one of the vending machines. And to edit the vending machines, you have to give yourself the perms or custom vending setup. You're gonna wanna go to your admin custom vending setup and then grant. So now when we talk to Bob, do you have anything else? Okay, let's see. Now we have the edit button and it's as simple as dragging what items you want in here. You have settings per section, so you can do the max stock. Seconds between refilling the stock and refill amount. Go ahead and save this. And just so you can see, the other option, there is nothing on this side. 
and the bow is still here. Once a vending machine has been edited, a folder will be created called vending machine and inside there will be a vending machine profile. Only edited vending machines will be stored here. This is for the plugin to store the data. There is no need to edit this because this is done in the game. I think it's time for Bob to wear a kit. Head on over to UMod, grab yourself a copy of kits, image library, and workshop skin viewer. We will now go ahead and drag all of these into our plugins folder within Oxide. Now we just have to give ourselves perms. Admin group. Workshop skin viewer. Sure. And kits. Absolutely. This is the command for workshop skin viewer slash W skin short name skin ID. I've prepared a list of commands for this tutorial. Now run these commands and put the items on so that we can create the kit. Create a new kit. Give it a name. We will hide this. Copy from inventory. Save kit. Back in our talker spawner file, we will go ahead and name this and save it. Now, when we reload the plugin, well, Bob Stylin. Look at him. How you doing, Bob? Looking good. Here we have an opportunity to run a couple different kind of commands for kits, either by giving the kit to them directly or opening up the kit interface. Head back to the default conversation file. Let's go ahead and make a new button. Go ahead and copy this section here and we'll go ahead and paste a new one here. So instead of saying, what do you have for sale? We could say, do you have any gear? Once they click this button, we'll have to take them to another window. Let's take them to page four. Here's page four. Our message to the player could be, the gear I have on costs 200 scrap. Next, we can give ourselves an extra button. Our reply could be, I will buy what you have for 200 scrap. Just like before, if they have insufficient funds, we'll send them to page two to tell them they're bums. This is the command to give a player a kit directly kit give display name kit name here we'll go ahead and put in the command don't forget to set a price of 200 scrap from here all we have to do is save and reload the plugin now that the plugin is reloaded do you have any gear i will buy what you have for 200 scrap I'm back with a scrappy bum. All right, let's give ourselves a little bit of scrap real quick. There it is. Back in the default conversation file, we can set up another button. Let's go ahead and copy this. Go ahead and insert our new button. And to set up a dialogue for our new button, we could say, or you could browse and here you could say let's browse the next command we'll be looking at is a player command chat dot say backslash quote forward slash the command arrangement backslash quote we need this backslash to expose the quotations once we put this command into the configuration because it will also be wrapped in quotations like this. We'll be using the player command to open up the kits panel. Back in our default conversation file, let's go ahead and put that in. I'll just go ahead and paste this command. And we don't want them going to the next page because it's going to be opening up another plugins user interface. So we will go ahead and null this out. And let's go ahead and save and see our changes. 
I just want to cut in real quick. I threw an error. I forgot to put a comma. The plugin will tell you the line and position where you need to correct your mistake. Let's go ahead and do a quick reload of the plugin. Slash kits. I've gone ahead and created some kits for this. The important thing is, is we do not want these hidden. Sure that they are exposed. Since we are admin, let's go ahead and reverse the perms. Now, when we talk to Bob, do you have any gear? Let's browse. It'll pull up the regular interface. We can make talking NPCs behave like human NPCs and open up the kit's user interface without any dialogue. The important note for this to work is to make sure that they are hidden on the list for both kits if you want to attach it to an NPC specifically. Go ahead and navigate to the talker spawner file and in here we are going to change call on use NPC from false to true. By changing this to true, this NPC will no longer use the default conversation file, nor will it use the open vending machine commands that we set up earlier. The only thing that this NPC will do is interact with other plugins that call on the NPC user ID. Here we're gonna to have to note down the NPC user ID for kits. Go ahead and copy this. Next, back out of the data file and go into your configuration file and find the kit's configuration. Once inside, we'll scroll down to the bottom here, and we are going to go ahead and paste in the ID for the NPC. Here, we can display specifically what kind of kits this NPC will display in his user interface. Rust, Grub, and Smile are the ones that I made previously. From here, save both files and then we'll reload both plugins and see the results. Setting up talking NPCs in this way allows you to spawn the NPC at the same location. Next, let's turn a talking NPC into a car vendor. To do this, we're going to need spawn modular car from UMod. We're also going to need the talking NPC vehicle add-on. Go ahead and drag both plugins into your plugins folder with inside of Oxide. Let's go ahead and set up a talking NPC at Oxum's gas station. Just like before, if we do talking underscore MPC, we now get a new set of commands. This command is talking underscore MPC vehicle. The type can be snowmobile, copter, modular car, or boat. Unique vendor name and true or false, so it'll spawn at the same monument or not. Let's go ahead and type that command in now. Talking underscore NPC vehicle modular car. We'll name him Phil and we'll say true so he'll spawn at this monument. Now that we have our NPC, we're prompted with some instructions. Go to car one vehicle spawn location and press the reload key. All right, let's find a spot for our first car. Here looks good. Press the reload key here, reload, and one more. All right, we're finished. Now, if we speak with Phil, go ahead and buy ourselves a car. Uh, we don't have enough scrap. Let's change that. Get our resources, give ourselves enough scrap. Let's go see our car. And there it is, our first car. Let's go ahead and buy a couple of the other cars. Get ourselves a medium. And let's get the large. Well. Looks like we have some further configurations to do. 
The Talking NPC Vehicle add-on also creates its own folder called Add-on, and inside of there are individual profiles. This profile will have the same name as our NPC, Phil. Inside of that, there will be three spawn locations. Those spawn locations will also have the preset for the modular car to be spawned. It uses a short name, and all we have to do is add the short name for the type of modules we want on the vehicle to be spawned. Just like before, we can go to Corrosion Hour to look up the display name to find the short name of the module that we want to insert into the configuration. Here we can go ahead and add the next module. I think I'm going to go ahead and put an engine module on the second one. And for the third one here, we can also put an engine module on it as well. And instead of this flatbed, we can go ahead and put a camper on this. Go ahead and save our changes. Go ahead and reload the plugin. Go ahead and get rid of these guys. Let's go and buy us some new vehicles. There we go. Simple as that. Let's go ahead and set up the snowmobile talking NPC. Go ahead and run the command slash talking underscore NPC vehicle snowmobile. We'll name him snow. Set it to true. Now that we have our first guy, we need to set our first spawn location by reloading. And the second location, reload. Now, when we talk to him, buy our snowmobiles there they are here I have a custom outpost with a custom airwolf structure let's go ahead and put a copter NPC here at this location the command we will run is slash talking underscore NPC vehicle copter we'll name them fly and also set it to true Now all we have to do is set our spawn points like before. Our first one here. Second one here. Go ahead and buy some minicopters. Here's our first one. Grab transport. There we go. Next, we can set up a talking NPC to sell boats. We can run the command slash talking underscore NPC vehicle boat. We'll name them Finn and set it to true. Next, we have to set up the spawn locations. Go ahead and no clip. Find a spot for our first boat. Reload key. Should be it. Go ahead and buy ourselves some boats. And it's easy as that. So far, the process of setting up the spawn locations for the vehicles is to get you up and running really quick. But there's another command if we want to add more spawn locations for different variations of cars. This command is talking underscore NPC vehicle locations. Let's go ahead and run this command. Once we run the command, it will print out the monument along with the position and rotation so that we could create a new spawn point. This information is also printed in the console so that we could easily copy the information. Head back over to Phil's add-on profile. We'll go ahead and make a new section. We'll add a comma here, we'll copy everything behind the comma. From here, press enter, and paste this whole new section in. And then we will name this number four. And then we will transfer the position and rotation information, seeing how the monument is the same. 
We will go ahead and remove the camper and add storage slots in its place. At this point, go ahead and save and close this file. We need to navigate to Phil's conversation file so that we can create a new button for this vehicle. Go ahead and go into the data file, talking at PCs, conversation file, we will select Phil. Now that we're inside of Phil's conversation file, we can see the opening dialogue. And here, this is the first button where they can buy a vehicle. I would like to buy a car. This references page one. Here's page one. So we'll scroll down to it. And I would like to buy a small car. I'd like to buy a medium car. Large is what we're looking for. Um, and this references page four. So we'll keep scrolling on down till we get to page four. And that's a nice choice. Do you want to buy this car? Now that we're going to be adding an additional vehicle, maybe we want to change this opening message to reference both of these vehicles. Do you want to buy the camper or storage ride? Next, we'll go ahead and copy this button. Paste it right below. Next, we'll modify each button reference which vehicle we're getting. The second button we could put, I will take storage. Up until now, the process of setting up an MPC vehicle vendor has been automated for us with the exception of having to modify the modular car settings. I'm gonna take a brief moment to explain what this command does. The talking MPC vehicle add-on plugin does two things. The first thing is when we run the setup command for the talking PC vehicle vendor, the type is a built-in preset. The different types of presets adopt the name of the NPC. So when we create snowmobile, copter, modular car, or boat, each type will have a conversation file and an add-on file created for you with that NPC's name. The second thing the add-on plugin does is spawn prefabs into the game, just like the talker spawner file. It can record the spawn location at a monument's position and rotation. The spawn command is talking underscore MPC vehicle spawn, spawn profile name, and add-on profile name. Spawn profile name can be found inside of the add-on profile name. The spawn profile name we just created was number four. It could be anything so long as there's no spaces in the name. The add-on profile name can be referenced in two ways either by money sign MPC name or by directly calling the name, in this case, Phil. Again, no spaces in the name. This is the command we'll put in Phil's conversation file to spawn the flatbed vehicle. We'll go ahead and enter the command now. So number four, and like before, we can call it directly. Go ahead and save and reload the plugin. We can go ahead and reload the Talking NPC Vehicle plugin. Let's go ahead and buy ourselves the large car. Yes, I would like the camper. And we'll get ourselves the storage car. There it is. Success. At this point, you might be asking yourself, Blizzard, what about the submarines? Well, I've got you covered because the Talking PC Vehicle plugin can spawn in pretty much anything that you could using commands. So let's give that a try. If you do a search for Rust Prefab List, Corrosion Hour has you covered there as well. Once we're here, we can go ahead and look up the submarine. We get several different li listings. What we want is the entity. All we need to do is copy this, put it inside our configuration. Another quick way to get the assets that you want to spawn in is to simply spawn it through the console and then use the int kill command. From there, you can copy the entity path printed in the server console. Here I've gone ahead and made a new section. This one's called solo sub. I've gone ahead and put a position and rotation. I have added the prefab, the solo submarine prefab. Also, I've done the same thing for the duo and this is what will be called in the command. I've gone ahead and set up a couple new buttons because I'm pretty sure you get it at this point. I would like to buy Robo. Red would be the rib. Solo sub. And the duo. All right, we have all our vehicles. 
There's a lot more to cover with this plugin, such as permissions, cooldowns, delivery missions, integration with other plugins, which I'll be covering in an upcoming video. Consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. Also, if this has helped you out in any way, consider hitting that like button and leave a comment of what kind of video you would like to see in the future. This is Lizard Mods, and I'll see you in the next video.